Hi everybody, my name is Jackson Allen, and I will be presenting about how bullying affects the social and emotional development of middle level students. The reason for my research, I did it for a middle school education class last semester. I'm an elementary ed and middle school education major. I also have a background working with adolescents as a pool manager. I have managed a pool for the past seven years. Um, and I wanted to know what these effects were as a free service teacher. So as a pool manager, I see adolescent interactions all the time. I like to compare them to that of a rocky road. One day, two kids may be best friends, and the next day, they're the worst enemies. I think this has to do with the, oh, I was just joking mentality when someone's really trying to be hurtful or play it off as a joke. So my rationale behind it is that everyone has either been bullied, been the bully, or was a bystander. This past year, my sister, who was a junior in high school, was severely bullied. The effects that it's had on her is she wants to leave home, go to college far away from anyone she knows, and she lost quite a bit of friends. I feel as, I feel as if bullying starts with the jokes students tell me, such as fat jokes, culture jokes, smartness level jokes, anything they can do to make somebody seem less than they are. So in support of my sister, she and I actually got tattooed this summer. Project Semicolon, which is in support of anyone who has thought about ending their life, but instead of putting a period on their story, they chose a semicolon, showing that their story isn't over. So I have one on my left wrist, and she has one on her back, and she chose the lotus flower for new beginnings for her senior year of high school and for college. So what is joking? Joking is seen as good teasing. People enjoy the teasing. You feel liked by the teaser. Both people enjoy the teasing. You don't feel the teaser's motivation is to put you down. If you decide you don't like it, you can say something and it will stop. The democracy of teasing is everyone in the group is able to tease and be teased. Bullying, on the other hand, is defined as repeated actions or threats of action directed toward a person by one or more people who have or are perceived to have more power or status than their target in order to cause fear, distress, or harm. Bullying can be physical, verbal, psychological, or any combination of these. Bullying behaviors can include name calling, obscene gestures, malicious teasing, rumors, slander, social exclusion, damaging a person's belongings, threats, or physical violence. Sometimes detecting the difference in the teacher can be very difficult. Students may sh show signs of discomfort, but often hide them to be not be seen as weaker than their that of the person bullying them. According to statistics. 70.6% of young people have seen bullying in their schools, with almost half of that number being directly affected by it. Young people rely on their interactions with the others as a way of making sense of the world around them. Students follow their popular or well-liked peers, trying to be just like them. I like to uh, talk about this as the monkey see, monkey do mentality. They see their, their well-liked and they want to be the same. I think this leads to students acting differently at school than they do at home, parents thinking they're an angel at home, where they're really not at school. Middle school is when students are going through a major development in their lives and trying to figure out who they are. This is typically when cliques begin to form, such cliques that we see on movies and TV, such as jocks, nerds, female, rich kids, poor, cheerleaders, really the popular versus non-popular. Our emotions guide us in facing predicaments and tasks too important to leave to the Danger, painful loss, persisting towards a goal despite frustrations, bonding with a mate, building a family. Each emotion offers a distinctive readiness to act. Each points us in a direction that has worked well to handle the reoccurring challenges of being young. During middle level education, students are going through major development of their emotions. It's not only a stressful time due to a new environment, but stressful due to all the changes going on inside of them. Children and youth who have been targets of bullying behaviors have reported low self-esteem as well as psychological complaints such as depression, loneliness, and anxiety. Students are bullied for various things. This graph shows student perceptions of why they were bullied. Notice how it ranges anywhere from appearance, to sexual orientation, to their religion, family makeup, or even their background. The Iowa Youth Survey in 2016 stated that 39.5% of sixth graders, 48 40.8% of 8th graders and 29.7% of 11th graders all felt bullied at school. A new thing that has come about has been cyberbullying. A story I found talked about a student who ended up killing himself at the age of 14. 
He killed himself due to his classmates calling him things such as half-breed online on his Instagram page. His aunt paraphrases some of the messages with one of them saying, I hope you die. When the principal was asked about this comment, he felt it was mean and inappropriate, but not bullying. After the student died, one of his classmates posted on Facebook, I'm glad he is dead. I don't have to look at his ugly face anymore. So the effects on adolescents. Most students have anxiety. This is a marked fear about one or more social situations in which the individual is exposed to possible, possible scrutiny by others, such as joining cliques. Ella and Lisa have been friends since kindergarten, and they have just started the eighth grade. Lisa started playing soccer with the popular girls, and they want her to stop being friends with Lisa, with Ella, due to her weight. They want Lisa to make jokes about Ella's weight to destroy that friendship. It is normal for adolescents to withdraw from their parents and spend more time with friends. If they start withdrawing from everyone, that can be a cause for concern. Young people also become more private during this time in their life, but extreme privacy may be the result of a young person concealing abuse of alcohol or drugs. So some of the effects that this has had on adolescents. Number one is depression. Depression is categorized as feeling hopeless and not seeing a point in the future. Some factors of being bullied or victimized learning, and other school difficulties. This can lead to non-suicidal self-injury or even suicidal thoughts and behaviors. Sometimes this can happen quickly. If a student is already depressed, these suicidal behaviors can be onset by something such as a breakup or even failing a test. Non-suicidal self-injuries can be classified as cutting, scratching, pinching, and burning. Another effect that it has on adolescents is anxiety disorder. Disorders. This is being stressed, nervous, and on edge. This is due to physical, verbal, emotional, or even sexual abuse. And these can set on panic attacks, which is a sudden onset of intense apprehension, fear, or terror, which shows similar symptoms to that of a heart attack. Another effect is eating disorders. These can be due to critical comments about one's weight. I think a lot of it has to do with the media and how celebrities are portraying being thin as the great thing. Another effect is substance abuse. Sometimes this can lead from peer pressure and students wanting to be cool like their peers, but other times it's used due to emotional or psychological problems. The three big ones are alcohol, marijuana, and tobacco. Using these as a young age, at a young age has been associated with lower IQ and poor memory, partaking in risk-taking behavior, physical injuries from dangerous stunts, aggression or antisocial behavior, sexual risk-taking, being the victim of a crime, and it can lead to educational, legal, social, and familial problems. And unfortunately, the worst effect is suicide. Suicide is the second leading cause of people 15 to 24. The number one is car accidents. In 2014, over 113 year olds committed suicide. The Iowa Youth Survey in 2016 showed that 9.9% .9 of sixth graders 13.4% of 8th graders and 16.9% of 11th graders all thought about killing themselves within the last 12 months. There is an upside. In 2016, 66.3% of 6th graders, 51.3% of 8th graders, and 41.4% of 11th graders felt teachers stepped in when somebody was being bullied or victimized. So as a future teacher, I have found that bullying has a drastic effect on middle level students. Teachers need to be aware of what we say, that way we are not seen as the bully. And it is my goal to make every student feel safe and welcome. And if I see someone being bullied, I'm going to step in and not brush it off as kids just being kids. should they be doing as an institution? Um, I think that that one, it, it's a very fine line because you don't, as a teacher, you don't want to be like invading your students' boundaries. But I feel as if, if we hear something about it, we need to really look into it the best we can. We can't just say, oh, it was, oh, someone's just being mean, brush it off, or just being funny. If it's something to that level, we need to look into it. Yeah. Um, we are seeing more and more bullying and I'm pleased to 
I did see we are having a little bit of a positive correlation with students feeling more willing to speak up about being bullied, but it's still, it's not as positive as I would like it. It's still the, well, if I speak up, somebody's going to think I'm a snitch or I'm not cool because I couldn't deal with that comment or maybe I do need to lose weight. Uh, so I, I saw a lot more about students still feeling scared to speak up in fear of more bullying. I don't know if this is a community of this, but I was just wondering, you know, do students who bully other students, are they more, are, what am I trying to say? Do students who bully other students, like the bullies, are they often like either uh, having like a anxiety or trauma in their lives or are worried that other students are going to bully somebody else? Is that Often that's the case. Yeah. Uh, a student who has been bullied often tries to put that on somebody else to make them feel better because somebody else has already made them feel worse. So it's sort of the whole, everyone is trying to feel better about themselves, but in turn are making others feel worse. So I know you mentioned the story about the kid who um, committed suicide and the story about the insurance policy. And I know um, it was kind of Sue's question when you were like, it was a fine line, but do you think there should be any repercussions to like the institutions um, I think so. Um, in that uh, actual situation, the family is suing the school district for not taking um, any action because they, it was brought to their attention and they brushed it off. Um, I don't know what type of action should be taken in every si uh, situation, but I think something should be done. Um, the situation should be doing something. Schools are supposed to be a safe place for kids, not where kids feel unsafe. From what I found, about 80% was related to bullying or feeling victimized in some way, shape, or form, uh, either at school or outside of school. For educators, what would you say are some strategies that help students deal with bullying? Uh, something big is just knowing your students. Um, I, I relate it back to peer managing a lot because I have built a good rapport with some of the kids. And I can tell when something is wrong with them. They might not tell me that something's wrong, by knowing them and how they usually act, you should be able to tell. Um, so really, we need to make sure that our students know that we are there for them, and we know that they're not just a student. They are an individual, they have likes, they have dislikes, and we're there to help them succeed in school. 